Hey there, millionaire. You know you've thought about it. Be honest. We've all thought about holding that scrap of paper in our hands. You know, the one with the numbers that match the ones on the screen. The winning lotto ticket. Who can blame you? Winning the lottery would be life-changing, right? Well, it would be life-changing, all right. But maybe not in the way you think. Maybe that winning ticket is the key to living the life you've always dreamed of. But it's just as likely to be the stuff of nightmares. Don't believe me? Keep watching. We'll show you the top 10 reasons why winning the lottery is the worst thing that can happen to you. Number one makes the whole thing an exercise in futility. But let's start with the big one. Number 10. You get murdered. Okay, mostly, you don't get murdered. Mostly. That's the main reason this isn't number one. But that doesn't change the fact that more than a few lottery winners met an untimely demise as a result of their supposed good fortune. William Post, for example, won over $16 million in 1988 just to have his brother take out a hit on him. The brother hoped to inherit, but all he got was a lot of police attention. Post walked away alive, but not every winner is so lucky. Gregory Birch Jr. was gunned down in his home after armed robbers couldn't pry his half million in lotto winning from him. And big winner Abraham Shakespeare, our most prestigiously named lottery winner, was killed and buried under a concrete slab for his $30 million fortune. His killer had already successfully convinced him to sign his assets over to her. So why that wasn't enough isn't clear. She's still in prison. And after Jeffrey Dampier won $20 million in the Illinois State jackpot, he spent a bunch of money on gifts for the woman he was having an affair with, his sister-in-law. She paid Jeffrey back for the lavish gifts, but having her other boyfriend kidnap and murder him. Instead of the money, she got three consecutive life sentences. Number 9. You don't understand what it means to win that kind of money. If you spend upwards of $200 a year to hit the jackpot, like the average American, you'll want to think about what to do in the unlikely event that it actually happens. And what you should do is what financial advisors tell anyone staring down a major windfall. Set up your dream team. That means being ready to hire an attorney, a tax specialist, and a financial advisor. And you should do that before you even show up to claim your winnings. That's because these financial professionals can help you maximize the amount you keep, reduce the taxes you pay, and set up trusts and other financial tools to help you do the things you want to do. Like buy every family member a house without finding yourself worse off than you began. Number 8. You don't win as much as you think. It's easy to get excited when you see an enormous dollar amount and you're holding a ticket that says it's yours. But don't plan how you're going to spend it yet. Your actual number is going to be smaller. That's unavoidable. It's taxes. The IRS gets 24% of your winnings in the US. Maybe more. And 24% adds up. You want $100 million? Give at least 24 to the tax man. Jackson Whitaker actually won $315 million, for example. After the deduction for taking the lump sum payment and the taxes he owed, he walked away with only $114 million. On top of taxes, there's another risk to your potential pot. Other lottery players. Yeah, the odds of hitting the winning numbers are low. But that doesn't mean it's not common for multiple people to hit the same jackpot. In New Zealand, lotto players jumped for joy when they discovered they won a million dollars and crashed to earth when they realized 39 other people did too. Their share? About 25,000 cash. Of course, that's not the only reason you might be forced to split the pot. What if you bought the ticket with someone else? And what if you got tripped up on the next point? Number 7. You have to share. So you skip the sharing classes in kindergarten. Big deal. It's your ticket, after all. Why shouldn't you keep it? Well, if you do that when others have a claim to the winnings, expect them to sue. That's what happened with other lottery winners, who declined to share the jackpot with the people who pitched in on the price of the winning ticket. Construction worker Americo Lopes, for example, tried to walk away with the winnings after he cashed in a $38 million lottery ticket he bought with his co-workers. They took him to court, and Lopes was ordered to share. On the bright side, if you are sued, you'll be able to afford an attorney. Number 6. The Woodwork Specifically, at the people coming out of it. There's nothing like publicly piling up fat stacks of cash to discover all the friends you never knew you had. Just kidding, they're not your friends. Not most of them, anyway. The one thing you can really count on after a big win is that people will start asking them for money. Some of those people will be friends, and some will be family. Some will be frauds, and some will be all those things. So winners beware. 
Sandra Hayes of Missouri discovered that her friends were exactly that kind of vampire after she split a $224 million Powerball prize with 11 other people. And while they didn't come begging for houses and cars, they did start suddenly forgetting their wallets when they went out with her. Stacy Lowry of Oregon had a similar issue after winning $5 million. She had to flee her neighborhood after people started badmouthing her for not buying them the expensive gifts they demanded. And that's only five of the top 10 reasons. It only gets crazier from here. Keep watching. Number five, you get divorced. Don't be like Denise Rossi either. She found her own way to lose everything after winning a modest $1.3 million jackpot with her husband in 1996. It turns out that Denise, like many other winners, wasn't key on sharing, so she concocted a plan to take the money and run. The plan went like this. Step one, lie. She didn't tell her husband about the money. Step two, divorce him and keep the money for herself. Step three, of course, was profit. Only the court had other ideas. After her scheme was discovered, they ordered her to pay her husband the entire pot. The results of her lotto experience can perhaps best be summed up by paraphrasing the immortal songsmith, Young MC. Got no money, got no home, got no husband. She's all alone. Number four, bankruptcy. When you win the lotto, your financial worries are over, right? Wrong. I think we've already established that's not always true. In fact, lottery winners can find themselves at higher risk for bankruptcy than they were in before their windfall. Why? Credit. Mountains of credit. Suddenly backed by lottery money, winners find that credit offers come quickly, easily, and in large amounts. That can lead them to make purchases with credit and find themselves overextended, leading directly to bankruptcy. Number three, you might just be bad with money. Some lottery winners just get themselves in trouble with their own bad spending habits. When Canadian winner Sharon Tirabasi hit it rich, she blew through her jackpot by spending heavily on homes, cars, designer clothes, vacations, handouts, lavish parties, pretty much trying to live like a queen. Unfortunately, royalty money has a B in front of the Illion, and her $10 million didn't stand up to that kind of expense. Ten years later, she was riding the bus to her rented house. Billy Bob Harold Jr. from Texas had a similar story, but in his case, he was probably too generous with the gifts he gave to his friends. Within a few years, he had burned through the entire $31 million pot. Number two, there's no privacy in the lotto. When you hit the lottery, you may have to announce your winnings publicly. At least, that's the case in many cities. The upshot? Not only do you need helping managing all the media requests for outright gifts and even guilt trips about how you really, truly owe your estranged childhood friend's cousin a Lamborghini. You'll come to the attention of thieves, as Jackson Whitaker did. We'll talk more about him in a moment. And you'll be the subject of numerous lawsuits, also like Whitaker. His attorney claimed he spent at least $3 million fighting about 400 lawsuits. Jackson Whitaker leads us to the number one reason why the lottery might be the worst thing that can happen to you. Number one, you get robbed. Okay, technically, getting murdered is worse, but all sorts of misadventures seem to befall unprepared lotto winners. Jackson Whitaker, the winner who took home $114 million, learned all about that when he was robbed, repeatedly. First, thieves took a suitcase from his trunk containing $545,000 in cash while parked outside a strip club. Actually, that brings us to the bonus lotto winner pro tip. Don't leave half a million dollars in cash in the trunk of your car at a strip club. Really, you should have a financial team to provide you with this kind of expert advice. But I'm happy to provide it here. More on that later. Later, thieves stole only $200,000 from the trunk of his car at the strip club. So it's safe to say Whitaker learned his lesson. It didn't really matter though, because thieves later stole the rest of his money by cashing 12 different checks at 12 different banks on the same day. Also, his house burned down. It wasn't insured. In retrospect, the lesson here might just be don't be like Jackson Whitaker. These things might have been prevented had winners taken better financial precautions. So if you ever win big, take the advice of financial advisors everywhere. Set up a financial team and listen to them. Above all, don't behave like the lottery winners on this list. If you do, you soon may find yourself wishing you never won the lottery at all. And that's it for our top 10 reasons winning the lottery might be the worst thing that can happen to you. What do you think the biggest downsides of winning might be? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to watch our video on the They are a true example for this video and will show you exactly what not to do. Click the video on your screen now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, stay wealthy and I'll see you on the next one.